Hare Krishna. Om Magana Timarandasya Gananjana Shalakaya Chatur Militam Yena Tusman Shri Guru Enama Shri Chaitanya Mano Gusam Sapitam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupakadamayam Dadati Swapalantikam Bandeham Shri Guru Shri Yatapada Kamalam Shri Guru Vaishnavanscha Shri Rupam Sakrachatam Sahagana Raghunatam Vitam Tam Sajevam Sabaitam Sabadutam Parijana Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Shri Radha Krishna Pada Sahagana Lalita Shri Vishakanitam Shri Hey Krishna Karna Sindhu Dina Bandhu Jagatpate Gopesha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namostate Tapta Kanchana Gauramihe Mahe Rinda Vaneshwari Vrishapanu Sute Devi Pranamami Hari Piyay Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prasthaya Bhutale Shrimate Bhakti Vedanta Swami Niti Namine Namaste Sarasati Devi Kauravani Pracharine Nirvisesha Shunyavari Pashyatya Veshatarine Vancha Kaupata Rubyascha Kripa Sindhu Bhaye Vacha Patita Nam Pavane Vyo Vaishna Vibhyo Namo Nama Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Atvaita Gadadha Shri Vasadi Gaur Bhakta Vinda Hare Krishna Hare Tosi Jevaya Priya Ekesha Vashyacha Vishnu Bhakti Pradidevi Satya Vajya Namo Namaha Our scriptures say Aradhanam Sarvisham Vishnu Paradhanam Param That of all kinds of worship, the worship of Vishnu is the supreme, is the best but then the scriptures go on to say tasmat parataram devi tadiyanam samacharam that even better than the worship of lord vishnu is the worship of those things in relationship to vishnu so this tadiyanam this is the worship means worship of tosi maharani tosi maharani is in relationship to lord vishnu just like you've been doing here, the marriage with Tosi and Shalagram. So, the worship of Tosi is very special because it helps us to get devotion. When we offer the arti to Tosi every morning, we sing the Tosi song, we offer our respects to Tosi. I beg you to make me a follower of the cowherd damsels of Braja. Please give me the privilege of devotional service and make me your own maid servant. This very fallen and lowly servant of Krishna prays. May I always swim in love of Sri Sri Radha and Govinda. So this is a prayer which we offer to Tosi when we are offering Tosi Arti every day. Tosi has devotion. Tosi Maharani is a pure devotee. And from the devotees we can get bhakti. 
we want to get bhakti. Just like we like to take the dust from the feet of Tosi and we put it on our head. The dust from the lotus feet of Tosi Maharani. If we hold it on the head, it's very powerful. It can purify us. It takes away all sinful reactions. We are here in this material world because we have some faults. We're not pure. If we were pure souls, we would not be here. The pure souls are all in Golok. We're here in the material world. Mrityuloka. This planet Earth is called Mrityuloka. Place of death. Everybody dies here. We all have to die. Right? We take birth, you have to die. But actually, we're, only the body dies, we're changing the body. The soul never dies. In the Bhagavad Gita, Lord Krishna says, Ajonitram, Ajonityam Shasvatamya Hava Nahanyate Hanyamane Shariri. For the soul, there is no birth and there is no death. Not having once been, does he ever cease to be? He is unborn, primeval, eternal, ever existing. He is not slain when the body is slain. So the body dies, but the soul never dies. We want to free the soul from the material body. By worshipping Tosi Maharani, we can get that kind of freedom. Tosi has pure devotion for Lord Vishnu and Lord Krishna. And by worshipping Tosi Maharani and respecting her, then we can get that devotion. She has the power to give it to us. So many devotees now are keeping Tosi in their homes. And we're very fortunate that here in this country, it's a good climate to grow Tosi. We can see how the Tosi is grown nicely here. And many manjaris, you can see here on the top, the, the buds on the top, these are the manjaris. So when you worship Shaligram, if you have Shaligram, Shaligrams are worshipped by the Brahmanas. So the Shaligram likes the offering of the Tosi Maharanis. That is the proper offering. You take the two leaves and you take the, the flower on the top of the Tosi and offer it to the Shaligram. And in this way, Lord Narayan, in the form of Shaligram, is pleased. In Bhagavad Gita, Lord Krishna also speaks about Tosi. Lord Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita, Patram Pushpam Palam Toyam. Right? He said, you should offer me a leaf, a flower, fruit, water, with love and devotion. Now, when he says Patram, we should understand that Patram is not just any Patram, but it's this Tosi Patram, the Tosi leaf. This is what is desirable by Lord Krishna. Lord Krishna will not accept the offerings unless there is the Tosi leaf there on the offering. When you put the Tosi on top of the offering, then Lord Krishna is pleased. He's so the worship of Tosi is very important for us because we want to develop devotion. We want to develop that devotion for Lord Vishnu or Lord Krishna. All the Vishnu temples and Krishna temples, they will all keep Tosi there. Tosi is always worshipped in the temples of Vishnu and Krishna. And Srila Prabhupada went to America in 1966 
So he didn't take Tulsi with him. He went to America and he began the Krishna Consciousness Movement. At that time there was no Tulsi. Later on, Prabhupada went to Hawaii. So he found in Hawaii there were Tulsis growing there. So Prabhupada said, he said maybe, he said maybe in the past yogis used to live there. Hawaii is an island, you know, in the middle of the ocean, and a lot of fruit grows there, papaya and pineapple, mango, these things grow there. So yogis, they can live like that, they can live on fruits. Like now is Bhisma Pancha. This is the last five days of the month of Kartik, and also the end of the Chaturmasya. So for the five-day period, many devotees are just simply fasting. Some are taking only fruit, and some others are taking also roots. It's a, a little tapasya. And by doing tapasya, we can get purified. In the Bhagavad Gita, Lord Krishna explains that acts of sacrifice penance and austerity should never be given up. And similarly in Srimad Bhagavatam, Lord Rishabdev also was instructing his 100 sons. Lord Rishabdev's oldest son was Bharat Maharaj, of whom India was named after him. Bharat, he was, he became the emperor of the world. So he was the son of Rishabdev, who was an incarnation of Lord Vishnu. So Rishabdev was preparing to enter into the forest, to enter into the Vanaprastha ashram. Vanaprastha comes after Grihastha. Now many of you are in the Grihastha ashram. After the Krihast Ashram, Vedic system is to go on into the Vana Prastha. means retired. You give up your material duties and take up more spiritual duties. We are all spirit souls and we have duty. We have our, we, we talk about Sanatan Dham. So what is our Dham? Our dharma is not just simply only working all day, but our dharma is to understand the relationship with the Supreme. And that means to engage in bhakti yoga or devotional service. Bhakti yoga. This, this is the tapasya for people. We have to do a little austerity. A little austerity means in our Krishna consciousness movement we talk about tapa to, means to give up pride, to become humble, to become humble, not to be proud of our material existence and our material possessions. Whatever we have in this world is all temporary. We have to understand our spiritual nature, that we are all spiritual beings and we have an eternal relationship with the Supreme, with Bhagavan. We want to cultivate that relationship. As human beings, we have a duty to inquire about life. We should ask, who am I? Why am I here? Where am I going? Often we can only think of ourselves as a material body. Material body is made up of senses. We eat and sleep and we're happy if we eat, if we get our meals every day and we can sleep every night. We're happy, we're thinking my life is successful. But even the animals do that. 
So Lord Rishabh Dev, he told his 100 sons, headed by Bharat Maharaj, that the pleasure of eating and sleeping is available even for animals like the pigs, which eat stool. He said, human life is not meant for just having pleasure like the dogs and the pigs. Human life is meant, first you have, we should do some tapasya. And by doing a little tapasya, becoming a little humble, we will purify ourselves. And with that purification, we can experience real happiness. We are meant to be happy. But in the material world, people are unhappy. We're quite miserable. We're trying to find happiness. And real happiness actually comes when we engage in the bhakti yoga. Because with bhakti yoga, we connect ourselves to the Supreme Lord. The Lord is the source of all pleasure. When we are connected to Him, then we can experience real happiness, real pleasure. And it begins when we start to chant the Maha Mantra. Just as you were all doing when I came in here, you were having a very lively kirtan, you were chanting the Holy Name. This is actually the Dharma for this Hari. We see Kali Yuga Dharma Hari Nam Sankirtan Krishna Shakti Vinayahi Tara Pramaka. The real religion in this age of Kali is chanting the holy name of Lord Krishna. But in order to do this chanting, we need Krishna Shakti. We need the energy of Lord Krishna. We have to connect to Krishna, we have to please Him. How can we please Lord Krishna? Simply by chanting His name. And as you're doing here also, worshipping Tosi Maharani with Shaligram, arranging their marriage, this also facilitates an awakening. Uh -huh. You can get more devotion and mercy. To your love, and she can give us also love. So now you can worship in countries like Canada and Russia, where it's very cold. Usually, Tosi would not grow in such a place because it's so extremely cold in the winter. But the devotees there are so devotional that they arrange for Tosi to be in a nice warm place. They will put her in a, a greenhouse or a glass house and they will arrange heating and lighting so that Tosi can remain throughout the winter. Even though the winter in these countries can be very severe, the devotees will make nice arrangements to cultivate Tosi, to keep her growing, so that she can provide nice leaves. As devotees of Krishna, we also decorate our neck with Kunti Mala. The Kunti Mala is made from Tosi. The wood from the Tosi tree is used to make the neck beads which go round our neck. We would call these beads sometimes, we'd say dog collar. Just like the dogs have the collar, so we have our collar, these Tosi neck beads. But they're very important for us. We never take them off. Sometimes we have to cover them <laughs> because sometimes, some places, some parts of the world, people don't. Uh, approve of this kind of thing. So sometimes we will put some shirt or some sweater or something to conceal them. 
but they're very important. We always keep these beads on, even when we're bathing. We won't take them off, we keep them on. Why? Because it's so important for us that we don't know when we're going to die. We don't know what's going to happen to us. But if we have these Kaunti beads, if we have this Tosi around our neck, then it is said, Yamaraj will not come. Yamaraj has told his servants, the Yamaduts, don't go to those people who are chanting the holy name. But if we somehow were not able to chant the holy name, we're not even ready or thinking about dying, somehow it happens, there's just some accident and you have to leave the body sun. But if we have this tosi around our neck, then the Yamadudas know, oh, this is one of the Vaishnavas. Lord has told the Yamadudas, don't bring those people to me. Then those are the devotees of the Lord. They don't come to me. So very important for us that we always have these Tosi neck beads around our neck. We also chant on the Maha Mantra, we have our mala in our bead bag. And the mala beads at the time of initiation, usually, uh, with the diksha, we will give Tosi mala. And then you can touch the Tosi. So just simply by touching the Tosi beads, it's very powerful, it's very purifying. We want to use all of our senses in the service of the Lord. So our sense of touch is there. So when we touch the beads, we are able to connect our sense of touch to the spiritual energy. Tosi is completely spiritual. She is a pure devotee of the Lord. Although we may see, oh, she is just an ordinary plant, we're not seeing her spiritual position. Actually, Tosi Maharani is very, very great devotee and very, very dear to Lord Krishna. The leaves of Tosi can be placed on the lotus feet of Lord Krishna or Lord Vishnu. Only Vishnu Tattva can take Tosi leaves on their feet, on their lotus feet. No other personality. We should never put Tosi on the feet of any other ordinary person. It is only for the Lord to decorate his feet. When the four Kumaras, the sons of Lord Brahma, they went into the spiritual world. They went into the Vaikuntha realm. So they came to the, the doorkeeper. It was actually the seventh doorway. And there were two go doorkeepers there, Jai and Vijay. And they wouldn't let the four Kumaras come in to Vaikuntha. So at that time, Lord Padmanabha came there. Along with the Goddess of Fortune, Lord Padmanabha came to see what was happening. Because the Lord knows everything. And he knew that the four Kumaras had come to visit him. So he went to the doorway to see the four Kumaras. And when he came there, the four Kumaras, they, the aroma of the Tosi leaves mixed with saffron from his lotus feet entered into the nostrils of the four Kumaras and they experienced a change in their body and in their minds. Simply by the aroma, simply by that fragrance, the smell which is coming from the Tosi leaves, it entered into the nostrils of the four Kumaras and there was a change in their body and in their mind. And they awakened their devotion. And so there are many miracles in connection with this 
Tulsi tree, very, very special, very fortunate. Therefore, devotees will always care very nicely. And when Tulsi grows nicely, then it's a sign of devotion. It means there's devotion there. Because without devotion, she will not grow. She, she will only grow and flourish where there is devotion. So worship of Tosi is very important for us. Srila Prabhupada introduced it to us and it was in the year 1973. After he began the movement, then they found the Tosi there in Hawaii. And one American woman there, a disciple of Srila Prabhupada, her name was Govinda Devi Dasi. She had gone to Hawaii with her husband and they opened a temple in Honolulu. And she had seen the Tosi and she found out how to grow Tosi and develop Tosi. And in this way she sent seeds to devotees in all parts of the world where there were temples and they sowed the seeds and they cultivated Tosi. So now Tosi is growing everywhere. I think many of you must also have Tosi in your home. Yes. Good. Mm, very nice. Yeah, it's, it's easy here to grow Tosi. You don't have to struggle very hard because the climate is very favorable, dry and a lot of sunlight. Tosi Maharani likes the sun. Vrindavan, of course, she also grows very nicely. Vrindavan. Vrinda. Vrinda is our name also for Tosi. So we're very grateful that you've arranged the marriage for Tosi here. You have her married to Shalagram. Very nice. This, we, we, if you have a daughter, then you want to get your daughter married. So here also Tosi is like your daughter. So you have arranged her marriage for her eternal husband, Shalagram. Bravo. Bravo. So we encourage you, go on and worship Tosi and continue to cultivate your devotion. When we worship Tosi every day, when we circumambulate Tosi, at that time we chant the prayer, Yani Kani Cha Papani Brahmahatyari Kani Cha Tani Tani Pradashanti Pradakshina So you can understand from that prayer, how powerful the worship of Tosi is, simply by circumambulating Tosi Maharani, simply by going around her, you can be free of sins, even the killing of a Brahmana. Now, I'm not encouraging you to go and kill a Brahmana, right? we don't recommend that you put it to the test. but. We should understand something of the potency of Tosi. That certainly we worship Tosi with devotion. She can just take away all of our doshas, all of our faults, all of our bad uh, sinful reactions which are there, which are waiting to give us trouble. So on this Kartik month, very good develop the habit to regularly worship Tosi. You keep Tosi at home, you can worship her. One time Srila Prabhupada called us, it was in New York. Prabhupada had come to New York and he was in our temple in Brooklyn and we had a nice Tosi tree growing there and Prabhupada would always want Tosi in his room. So Prabhupada said, actually said, this is all you need, Tosi and the holy name. If you have Tosi growing, many of you all said you have Tosi, so you need to also chant the holy name. 
the chanting of the holy name is very important because Tosi is a person, she's a devotee and she likes to hear the chanting of the holy name. So even if you don't have taste for chanting, chant for t the pleasure of Tosi Maharani because she does, she has taste and she likes to hear the chanting of the holy name. So if you continue in this way, worshipping Tulsi and chanting the holy name, then certainly your life will be successful and you can all go back to Godhead. Krishna is waiting for all of us to go back to be with Him in, this, in Goloka. So, just continue as you're doing today. You just continue, make it a regular habit to worship Tosi and to chant the holy name. And this way, Srila Prabhupada will be very pleased, Lord Krishna will be very pleased, and certainly our life will be a great success. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna. Are there any question? Anybody has any question? You want to ask anything? Okay. Any question? Any questions? Maximum one devotee. <laughs> I have a question. <laughs> Maharaj, thank you so much for enlightening us with the glories of Tulsi Maharani. We are very, very grateful to you for coming to us and blessing this wonderful occasion. Maharaj, my question is that you had mentioned about mentioned about uh, offering Tulsi on the lotus feet of Krishna and Vishnu. So, how about offering the Tulsi to Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Uh, the reason why I am asking is that one of the purport in Sri Chaitanya Saridamata Prabhupada is mentioning that we should not disturb the mood of Gauranga Mahaprabhu. So, if he is in a Bhakta Bhav, is it okay to offer Tulsi on the lotus feet or? Yes, yes it's alright. We do offer Tulsi to the Lotus Feet of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Because Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is Vishnu Tattva. Although you, he, you may say, well, he's in the mood of a devotee, we don't want to disturb his bhava, but we're not worshipping him in the mood of a devotee. We're worshipping him as the Supreme Lord. You see? But just like Lord Chaitanya took sannyas, we don't worship him as a sannyasi. We worship him with a full head of hair, and with jewelry and net and ornaments and so on. We decorate him. Because in the, in the spiritual world, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is in the, he's, he's enjoying the, the association with all of his devotees. And so we do offer Tosi to him. You can see garlands placed around his neck Tosi and his lotus feet also decorated with Tosi leaves. Not only Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, but also Nityananda and also Advaita Acharya. Because all three are Vishnu Tattva. Advaita Acharya is the form of Mahavishnu and Sadashiva and Lord Nityananda is Lord Balaram. So they're all Vishnu Tattva. And so you see lotus feet the Lord's feet are decorated with the toes. Thank you so much. Madhaji, first you can come and then collect the prasada. No one question. No, no, uh, yeah, there is time. Okay, if it is very important, you can ask. Okay, okay, Madhaji. Please pass the mic. First of all, I would like to say Namaste Guru.
it's not a bomb question. Just I want I want you to encourage me. I have a lot of negative thinking in every situation. So how can I stop like, this negative thinking? I have lots of like uh, negative thinking. I play with lots of negative thinking. I try to stop it, but I don't know how I can stop. Please, can you encourage me regarding this? Yes. You have doubts, you have your negative thinking of doubts, right? So, Lord Krishna is Madhusudan. He's the killer of the demon Madhu. And your doubts are like the demon Madhu. So, Lord Krishna, he can kill the demon of doubts. How will he kill the demon of doubts? By the knowledge which he gives. You should read the Bhagavad Gita. If you read the Bhagavad Gita, then it will help you to conquer your doubts and the negative thinking which comes in your mind. You have to hear from Krishna and from Krishna's devotees. So when you hear from them, they will help you to counteract all the doubts. The doubts are coming due to ignorance, due to avidya, due to what we call darkness. Just like in the darkness of night, so you feel doubts, you feel insecure, you feel, you worry, you have fear. But in the daytime there's no fear. You can walk everywhere in the daytime, you're not afraid. So knowledge is like light and ignorance is like darkness. So you have to counter this ignorance, the doubts which come in your mind. You can counter them with knowledge and that knowledge will come from hearing and from reading scriptures like I said the Bhagavad Gita and you will also get knowledge if you will chant the Maha Mantra if you do the chanting of the Hare Krishna Mantra then that will help you to overcome all of your doubts and your negative the negative thinking is coming from your mind but your you are not the mind you are the soul so your mind can be your friend, but your mind can also be your enemy. We give the example, just like a knife can be used by some criminal to kill someone, but the same knife may be used by a doctor to heal someone. So you have to learn how to control your mind. Your mind can be the friend or it can be your enemy. When your mind thinks negatively, then that is the mind being the enemy. You have to conquer over this mind, train your mind. And you do this, you can do it. Most important is by chanting Hare Krishna Mantra. Are you chanting? I'm not chanting, just I'm taking this state of Krishna. Krishna, uh -huh. Lord. Krishna, I'm just taking, taking this step. Yes, well, it's good if you can learn, you know the mantra the which we are chanting, you know this Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Krishna, Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Rama Hare Hare. Not very difficult, right? Yes. I'm fine. I'm fine. Yes, if you chant this will take away all of the negative thoughts which are there in your mind. This is how you have to deal with your mind. Thank you. Thank you. you are having mala? Mataji? Mataji? Do you, do you have any beat to chant on? Okay, bring one mala. Maharaj will give to her.